Okay, really quick demo here of my display control script. So I'm gonna, let's jump into um, looking at it. This is the script that I use to control my connected displays to change things from like say my internal laptop display to an external display to move into span mode or mirrored mode. It's the XR and R script that we all end up writing. Um, this is probably like, I don't know, 10th generation at this point, but it's a quick re uh, recent rewrite, to be honest. Um, one thing I should note is that the way that I detect whether or not I'm running as root or as the XORG user is a little uh, funny here, and I'm probably gonna change the way that I do that and actually look for an actual process ID and grab the username out of that. Um, it's a better way to do it. Um, this script just checks to see like literally like what home directory it's living in right now, which is a dumb way to do it. Um, so, you know, don't judge or judge up to you, but uh, that will change. So what happens is uh, let's look at the main function here. Really, it's just a, here's a case statement. It checks to see what the command line option is. And if the first argument is like menu, internal, external, span, span X, mirror, toggle, auto, backlight, it just takes appropriate action. Um, menu brings up this menu. This is a just standard. It just dumps a bunch of stuff to standard out. Um, this is Rofi or Rofi, which is a D menu drop in replacement and just brings up the default options. We'll get out of that. So uh, it's pretty intuitive. I mean, internal is the internal laptop display. External is the external laptop display. And then we have things like um, span, which spans from the internal display to all connected external displays. Span external, which skips the internal display, turns that off in the laptop and then uses only the external displays. That's convenient if you have like a lot of nice external displays hooked up in a nice configuration. Uh, mirror, you know, you're doing a presentation, right? You wanna see what's on your screen and then also what's on the, the projector or TV or what have you. Low res is just, uh, you can skip that. That's just something I use for doing demonstrations um, because I'm on a big ultra wide that's super high res and it doesn't, sometimes on YouTube, the text will be too small. Anyhow, the clever part of this is that when it runs uh, any one of these items, we'll see here, we'll jump down here to the execute mode. So it basically it just runs uh, and tries to, by the way, tries to auto detect everything. So, you know, this, hopefully would run on other systems without any change. Um, it tries to identify the internal output automatically by just finding out if there's a, a backlight for it. Um, I believe that's how I was doing that. I'll have to check. But basically, I wrote this to be portable. Um, so you should be able to get it up and running on your system without much trouble. And let's see, I wanted to talk about the fingerprinting. So it, whenever I run any of these commands, like, um, oops. Let's get out of here for a second. If I run like uh, internal, external, span, span X, or mirror, those modes, it will then remember and it'll say, okay, based on the connected displays that you have right now, I'm going to remember that you liked external for this situation. Or um, if I hook up to a projector, it's going to remember that I wanted that to be in mirror mode. And the way that I'm doing that, I'll bring this up, maybe I'll make this even a little bit bigger. This is, might be crazy big, we'll see. Uh, we're going to watch the file, which is just auto-generated here. It's uh, in the config directory, the xdg config directory, and it's called, of course, display control. I don't know. I probably should rename that somehow. Oh, that is too big. There we go. You can see that nicely. So these fingerprints are just auto-generated based on the EDIDs. I take the XR and R output, the verbose output. I take out the EDID values and as simply as possible and as fast as possible in the script. And that script, by the way, I think is uh, entirely POSIX compliant. It's no bashisms or weird Z shell stuff. Um, anyhow, so it takes those EDID values, hashes them, and then it says, okay, so this is a fingerprint for this set of connected monitors. Um, you can see the last line there is actually my current connected display. And I'm gonna demonstrate what happens if I switch to uh, span mode. So span external. So in this case, span external will keep the internal display off. And then if I had two external displays, it would span across those. I only have one external display. So when I run this, hopefully we're not going to see any change and it won't totally nuke the screen recording. Uh, you can see now that last line has changed to span X. So it, it just erases and rewrites that fingerprint at the end of the config file. And then every time that I connect up a display, 
I have a UDEV event which triggers, and that UDEV event will run my display control script in auto mode. Auto mode just says, take a look at the config file, see if there's a fingerprint. If there's a fingerprint, use that mode. So in this case, it would default, it would just bring up SpanX right away. Um, and if there is no fingerprint, then just switch to say external or switch to internal if there are no connected external displays. So auto mode is a very simple heuristic. And now I'm gonna go ahead and I'll switch back to external and you'll see that the fingerprint is updated for external. So again, I mean, it's, you know, there's no manual intervention required for the fingerprinting. It just remembers what your last preferred state was for the, the, the current configuration based on the connected monitors. Uh, hope that was interesting or useful.